Hi. For decades, satellite networks provide communication services for use cases that are beyond terrestrial networks' capabilities. While terrestrial mobile networks are multi-vendor interoperable 3GPP-based solutions, non-terrestrial satellite networks are vendor-dependent DVB-optimized solutions. Market forces are pushing for standard integration and unification of terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks to provide ubiquitous mobile communication and gain the full advantages of 5G. My name is Yaron Nachman, and I'm a 5G product line manager at Gilad Satellite Networks. In this presentation, I will discuss the journey of non-terrestrial networks to 5G, covering technology changes, standardization activities, and market evolution. Let's start. Satellites provide communication services for the last 40 years for use cases that terrestrial fixed and mobile networks cannot provide. Those use cases span across urban, rural, remote, and isolated areas, including maritime, in-flight connectivity, death, defense, land mobile, cellular backhaul, IoT, residential and enterprise use cases. Non-terrestrial networks use GEO, MEO, and LEO satellites, as well as hubs. There are different values as well as limitations for each type of satellite. Satellite networks architecture is based on distributed hub architecture with multiple gateways connecting remote VSATs or modems. Satellite technology is based on a property optimization of the DVB broadcast standard. In this presentation, I will use the terms NTN and satellite networks interchangeably while mostly focusing on satellite networks. Satellite networks are changing during the last years and will continue to change in the future. Large part of satellite networks becomes more virtual and cloud native, which are more dynamic, scalable, and highly available. Satellite becomes high throughput satellites with gigabit and terabit capacity. Flexible software-defined satellites are used in configurable, with configurable beams, capacity, and power distribution. Multi-orbit, geo, and NGSO satellite constellations. Satellites with regenerative onboard processing to allow additional functional flexibility. Moving in the direction of multi-vendor open standard interoperable solutions, including st standard terminals and phones. Larger ecosystem of software and hardware vendors for space and ground segments. And finally, an integrated terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks. The 3GPP 5G NTN standardization activity will foster those changes. Now let's see what 5G brings to the table. It brings the 5G new radio that was developed to bring lower latency, greater capacity, enhanced speed, beamforming, and more capabilities. It is built on an open RAN architecture with disaggregated and cloudified G node B, the CU, DU, and RU, that allows the split of RAN functions between central and remote locations. Mobility management, that is responsible for the tracking, registration, management, and authorization of network connections as devices roam and hand over between base stations. Standard session management that is responsible for the setup of the connectivity for the UE towards data networks, as well as managing the user plane for that connectivity. Standard user management that authorizes network access and roaming based on user subscriptions. Policy control that provides policy rules for control plane functions like network slicing, roaming, and mobility management, quality of service policy, and charging. I mentioned charging. The, in 5G, there is a standard converged offline and online rating and charging of network usage, network slices, and API calls. Standard security in building 5G, standard user traffic, integration protection, improved subscriber privacy, subscriber identity, roaming interface, mutual authentication, and encryption of key interfaces. Network slicing is a new concept in mobile networks, allowing an end-to-end -end virtual networks across 5G network 
for different customers, different SLAs, separated and secured. Network data analytics that efficiently collects data from user equipment, network functions, OEM system within the 5G core, the cloud and the edge network. It provides analytics to support network automation, closed loop operation, self-healing and experience management. Value added services are provided on top of the 5G core, for example, monetization, location based and video streaming applications. It is done via a standard 5G core application function that can retrieve data from other 5G core network functions. Cloudification. Cloud native microservice based run and core network functions can run on private or public cloud and enjoy the scaling and high availability of cloud native impl implementations. Edge computing. Edge computing complements 5G technology, allowing network functions and applications to be placed closer to end users for low latency and better network utilization. Those are just the main capabilities of 5G standard that allow the creation of large and open ecosystem of hardware and software vendors to interwork together and provide a lower TCO um, of the complete solution for the network operator. The majority of those 5G standard capabilities can be used as is for the 5G NTN network, while the others need some adaptations to satellite media characteristics to accommodate the long propagation delays, the Doppler effect due to the moving satellites, the base station mobility, and more. Looking at the path towards unification of TN and NTN network, we can say that we are today at the interworking stage where each network is designed and optimized independently. In this stage, we can see how terrestrial networks can be backhauled in overlay mode over satellite networks. The next coming stage is integration. Integration of TN and NTN networks, where NTN should be adapted to TN design, according to 3GPP standard, with minimum, minimum impact to support the integration of NTN for coverage and availability extensions. The last stage is unification of TN and NTN networks, where network design is optimized considering characteristics of both TN and NTN components against a set of common goals. 3GPP star started the work on NTN with a study item back in 2017. In release 15, the study focused on channel model deployment scenario and potential key impacts uh, for new radio NTN. In release 16, the study focused on necessary features enabling NRNTN and identifying the use cases and service requirements. In release 17, the work specified both 5G NRNTN and 4G IoT NTN specifications based on the previous studies, focusing on supporting LEO and GEO satellites using 5G, transparent payload architecture, spectrum frequency below 6 gigahertz, especially the L and S band, UE with GNSS capabilities, and addressing identified challenges due to the propagation delay Doppler effect and moving cells. In release 18, specifications are focusing on the NTN coverage enhancements, NTN deployment above 10 gigahertz, especially the KA band, mobility and service continuity between NTN and TN, etc. In release 19, 3GPP will further evolve NTN in both new radio NTN and IoT NTN and will provide the regenerative payload architecture, supporting UE without GNSS capabilities, multi-connectivity and carrier ag aggregation between satellite orbits or between satellite and mobile access, and more. One key solution concept is transparent versus regenerative architecture. The transparent architecture using an existing satellite that transparently repeats the NRUU signal uh, to, towards the NTN gateway that also transparently repeats that signal towards the G node B that is on the ground segment. The 5G core and the edge computing are also in the ground segment and or on cloud, cloud environment. This architecture has simpler solution architecture, lower cost, 
and power on the satellites, but has limited latency and bandwidth, and there is no functional flexibility. It is just a regular band pipe. On the other hand, the regenerative architecture uses new satellites with full G node B onboard processing, OBP, that terminates the UU signal. Potentially also other functions like UPF um, on, on the satellites. Another split option is to use the G node B DU component on the satellite and the G node B CU centrally on the ground segment with intercity satellite links that are used to backhaul the traffic between any satellite and any target gateway. The 5G core and the edge computing are located on the ground segment and or on the cloud environment. This architecture has complex solution architecture. It has higher cost and power on the satellites, but it provides lower latency, higher bandwidth, and higher fa functional flexibility, allowing um, use cases like UT to UT connection, edge computing uh, on the satellites, ISL backhaul, and more. When we look today at the satellite broadband service providers, we see some of them use geo satellites, which allow for larger coverage area with smaller number of satellites, while others use high number of LEO satellites, which allow for lower latency, larger throughput, and capacity scalability using more beams. On the other side, while geo is stationary in respect to Earth, LEO satellites move at higher speed and require tracking and handover between the satellites. Starlink is the biggest operator with more than 5,000 LEO satellites in orbit as of today, with a target number of more than 12,000. It serves mainly the residential market in rural areas across North America, Europe, and Australia, providing average throughputs of between 50 to 100 megabit per second on the downlink and 10 megabit per second on the uplink. OneWeb, now part of Utilsat Group, is another broadband service provider who uses a constellation of 648 LEO satellites. It mainly targeting business and government markets. Kuiper, a subsidiary of Amazon, plans to deploy a constellation of more than 3,000 LEO satellites during next year. All those operators operate in the KU and KA spectrum and use proprietary technology, but some of them have already plans to move to standard 5G technology in their second future generation of satellites based on the 3GPP, NR, NTN standards and products maturity. As for the IoT and direct-to-device service providers, many of them provide and will provide IoT messaging and speech services to pre-3GPP release 17 unmodified forms during next year while partnering with MNOs and use the MNO spectrum in the L and S band. The direct to device use case is very important at it, at is, as it opens the satellite services market to the massive use base of smartphone devices. It is the largest or the biggest opportunity for 5G NTN. The target is that any subscriber with a standard cell phone will be able to communicate via satellite, making SATCOM a truly mainstream solution. As a first step, unmodified smartphone will be served by properly optimized um, E node B on the satellites. And in a second step, release 17 uh, smartphone will be used. As for the standard 5G NTN solutions, based on release 17 and release 18, there are trials, proof of concepts and RFPs that have already started in this year in 2023 and will continue in 2024 next year. Partnerships are created as we start the 5G NTN journey between satellite operators, mobile operators, device manufacturers, and chipset vendors. Starlink has announced its collaboration with T-Mobile to bring direct to sell text messaging services to areas with limited cellular coverage. The partnership plans to start in better service uh, end of 2023 and with, with the full launch of voice data and IoT services scheduled for 2025. 
several international cellular providers, including Rogers, Optus, One New Zealand, KDDI, and SOD, have joined SpaceX and T-Mobile in increasing global connectivity. Like T-Mobile, Optus in Australia has partnered with SpaceX to make use of standard LEO satellites constellation to provide standard direct to mobile connectivity to consumers in hard to reach areas across Australia. AST, Space Mobile and AT&T team together and have placed a satellite call over 5G between an unmodified smartphone and a satellite. To conduct the test, AST Space Mobile used Galaxy S22, its Blue Walker 3, LEO satellite, and the AT&T 5G spectrum. Amazon is partnering with Verizon to use Kuiper for satellite-based cellular backhaul, allowing Verizon to expand access to its 4G and 5G networks to more rural and remote locations without having to employ more traditional connectivity methods. Apple partnered and invested in GlobalStar to build new generation of Leo constellations that will provide mobile services to iPhone 14 devices, from emergency SOS texting to voice and data services. Qualcomm has announced Qualcomm satellite chipset that will bring satellite connectivity to an array of devices as part of the partnership with Iridium to launch smart Snapdragon satellite. Users will be able to access emergency messaging on Snapdragon satellite and connect to satellites in areas where there is no mobile coverage. Qualcomm confirmed that it's planning to support Snapdragon satellite with a standard 5G NTN as NTN satellite infrastructure and constellations become available. Skylo is an NTN service provider for IoT and mobile devices who works with regional and global satellite operators, partnered with Quisel and Bullet device manufacturers and Samsung chipset vendor to provide a standard 3GPP release 17 5G NTN solutions for IoT and direct to device. And Bullet Group, a British smartphone company, has partnered with chips and supplier MediaTek to launch the smartphones uh, to include two-way satellite messaging technology with SOS feature. Bullet and MediaTek have worked together to enable the addition of direct-to-satellite communication in the next generation of Bullet 5G smartphone. So looking at the future evolution of 5G NTN market, we can see that cellular backhaul of 4G and 5G networks is supported today in overlay mode with high gigabit per second bandwidth of current optimized DVP-S 2X technology. Gilat is a market leader in this cellular backhaul over satellite. Then in the next two years, 5G NTN narrowband services will start to be supported first on on unmodified smartphone and then on a new release 17 smartphones and iot devices starting 2026 5g ntn broadband service will start to appear on new vsats and modems that are based on release 18 ntn capabilities and last step starting 2028 5g ntn enhanced broadband services will come with VSATs and modems based on release 19 NTN capabilities and a new regenerative satellite constellations. All in all, 5G services will evolve during the, the next five plus years with higher bandwidth, lower latency and higher capacity. Looking over the horizon of 2030, we will see 6G coming with a 3D network unified by design, space, air, and ground network solution. It will have a multi-layer communication to provide ubiquitous coverage. Artificial intelligence will power the different network domains, the RAN, the edge, and the core. 6G network is expected to fuel innovative applications such as connected autonomous vehicles, unmanned aerial vehicles, autonomous healthcare solutions and manufacturing systems, virtual augmented and extended reality and more all using the 6g 3d network 
This is just the beginning of the end-to-end -end journey to 5G. It will be long, but exciting. Thank you.